Hi, welcome to my kitchen where we are going to do some chemistry. Today we are going to do the classic penny drop lab where we collect um, samples on top of the surface of a penny to check out the surface tension, which is a common way to examine the effect or the strength of intermolecular forces. This lab comes from my full year chemistry lab book and we are going to do this a few different ways. We are first going to count how many drops can fit on the surface of a penny with uh, water and then we are going to duplicate that uh, a few times just to get some good data. We are also going to look at rubbing alcohol. We're gonna use olive oil because that's the only oil I have here at home. And we are also going to do this with salty water and with soapy water, just to see what happens. Okay, so here we are testing just water on the surface of this penny. That's 20. I got 30. 31 was the drop that uh, spilled. So that means 30 fit on the coin. It was really cool, right? That bubble that formed. Okay, we're gonna do this again, just to make sure that everything works out well. Twenty-seven was the drop that spilled it so there we have it that was water and now we are going to move on to rubbing alcohol and this rubbing alcohol that I have is 90% alcohol I'm just gonna pour some into this Erlenmeyer flask I really should be using a beaker but this is what I have now rubbing alcohol is a little bit of a bigger molecule than water is, but it's a polar molecule. So the question is, how is that going to affect how many drops can fit on this penny? So this penny is the same one, it's totally dried. And um, oof, I'm doing, this is stinky. I'm doing all of these heads up. I wanna see how many I can fit on Abe Lincoln. That was 22. Hard to tell, but it spilled back here. <laughs> what I've noticed is that these um, droplets of the alcohol are much thinner. Like the, the liquid is way more dribbly, if that makes sense. One. Oh, it was 26, 26. It spilled back towards me again, but that right there was 26. So it appears that the rubbing alcohol is not doing as well as the plain water. Next up, we are going to do some olive oil. That was 30 and then it spilled all over usually I like to do this with baby oil because baby oil is much thinner um, and it's a little bit more representative of the uh, rubbing alcohol with how thin it is this is a much thicker oil I think part of it is that it's just not getting the message to spill off the penny <laughs> here we go Twenty-eight. Okay, next up we are gonna use some salty water. 
and I don't know the concentration of this. I did not measure it. I kind of just went for it. <laughs> Which is usually not what we do, but uh, that's what I did. So just giving that a stir. And because salt has ionic bonds, I'm kind of anticipating that this is gonna hold together really, really well, but we'll have to see. Kind of not that different from just water. Okay, let's try again. Thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty six, thirty six, thirty six on the salt water. Okay, last up is soapy water, and I'm just gonna use dish detergent. All right, here is my penny. I'm working with some soapy water here that I have stirred nicely, making sure that my pipette goes all the way down to the bottom so that I don't like pick up the soapy bubbles on the top. I'm just gonna wipe that so there's no soapy bubbles on the little spout there, and here we go. Every drop I add is just spilling off. I don't know if you can tell. I like add a drop. And this air bubble that's in the center is just kind of like pushing it off the edge. Wow, I was not expecting that. I will say it does absorb nicely into this paper towel though. Okay, so again, at drop 13, it starts pushing off all of the other uh, new drops getting added on. And the last time I think it was 15. So this soap really it, like makes the water slippery. Like it doesn't want to join the bubble that's forming on top of the coin. It just kind of like slides right off. So the slippery soap <laughs> is actually making some sense here. 9, 10, 11... 15 pushed it off, 17, 18 pushed off, 19 pushed off, 20 pushed off, 21 pushed off. Wow, that's kind of crazy. Okay, so we're only getting to the teens on the soap. Kind of crazy. So this is going to explain surface tension. So the stronger an intermolecular force is, the more likely these um, particles are to stick to each other because that's really what an intermolecular force is. It's the force of attraction between molecules. So when we have really good, um, strong forces between our particles, we're gonna get a big bubble because they like to stick together and they don't wanna fall off of this penny. Um, so that should kind of put it into perspective of what is a strong intermolecular force and what's a weak force. Water is very well known for having strong forces that alcohol did not really do as well as the water. The oil was kind of on par, but I think that is also because it's very massive. Um, oil molecules are very, very big, so they have a huge dispersion force. And actually what can happen in some of the crazy big molecules is that um, the molecules are so big that they'll actually like get tangled in each other, kind of like monkeys in a barrel, that game. <laughs> um, the, the molecules kind of get tangled, which kind of gives them a fake illusion of having a stronger intermolecular force than they really have. So that's it. Let me know what kind of data you got below in the comments. Is my data so different from yours? Are we kind of on par? Um, did you enjoy the lab? Did you do any different substances? Let me know. All right, I will catch you here in the next one. Bye.